Hello there, and welcome to this talk about emergency tracheostomy management. Today I'm going to review the algorithm published by the National Tracheostomy Safety Project. This details the emergency management of a tracheostomy in a patient with a potentially patent upper airway. This algorithm was published in the journal Anesthesia in 2012. This algorithm assumes that the patient you assess has a potentially patent upper airway. So looking at the algorithm, at first, it seems like that there is a lot to it. It looks quite complicated and potentially quite daunting. But once you break it down into manageable sections, it becomes a lot easier to understand and apply. And that's what I'll be doing today in this talk. So hopefully by the end of it, you'll have a better understanding of the steps involved in managing and assessing a patient with a tracheostomy and also to have the confidence to apply it in a real-life clinical situation. So starting at the top, at the start of the algorithm, the first step is to call for help. Next, as in any life support situation, assess the airway and the breathing. Bear in mind, tracheostomy patients will have two airways, their own upper airway and their tracheostomy. Assessment is by looking, listening, and feeling for breathing at the patient's mouth and at the tracheostomy tube or stoma for 10 seconds. Before you do this, you need to apply basic airway maneuvers to open the upper airway. And they are head tilt, chin lift, or a jaw thrust. There are a couple of adjuncts you can use to assist your assessment. First, the Mapleson C circuit also known as a water circuit. There are two ways that you can use this in this situation. With a face mask, you can place it over the patient's nose and mouth or over the tracheostomy, or you can attach it directly to the tracheostomy. The reservoir bag provides visual confirmation by its movement if the patient is breathing. Also, waveform capnography can be attached and is another method to give visual confirmation of breathing as it gives a pictorial display of the carbon dioxide concentration in expired air. With this assessment, you will find out if the patient is breathing or not. And depending on the outcome, you will respond differently. If the patient is breathing, then apply high flow oxygen to the face and the tracheostomy. If the patient is not breathing, then you will need to assess for signs of life and if necessary, start CPR. The next step is to assess the patency of the tracheostomy. Assessing patency can be broken down into two sequential steps. Step 1. Try to pass the suction catheter through the tracheostomy. Step 2. Look, listen and feel at the mouth and the tracheostomy. Before trying to pass a suction catheter, bear in mind that tracheostomies have a number of components to them. So to assess patency, you may need to remove any speaking valves, caps or inner tubes. Simply removing these components could resolve any obstruction. When you pass the suction catheter, if the tracheostomy is patent, the catheter should pass easily into the trachea. A word of caution about using anything more rigid, like a gum elastic bougie. As it is relatively stiffer, there is a risk of creating a false passage in the trachea if the tracheostomy tip has been displaced. If the catheter passes into the trachea, then you can consider it as patent. So that covers the airway component of your ABC assessment, and you would then continue with your assessment as appropriate. If you need to, you can then ventilate via the tracheostomy. If the suction catheter doesn't pass, then the tube is blocked or displaced. You would then move on to the second step in your assessment of the patency of the tracheostomy tube. To do this, you will first have to deflate the cuff of the tracheostomy and look, listen and feel again at the face and the tracheostomy. You might feel air flowing around the tracheostomy tube from its insertion site at the neck. And again, 
You can use the Mapleson C circuit or waveform capnography to assess for signs of breathing. If deflating the cuff improves the patient's clinical condition, this suggests that the tracheostomy tube is partially obstructed or displaced. Continue with your ABC assessment. If you find that the suction catheter does not pass and deflating the cuff doesn't improve the patient's condition, then the tracheostomy tube is completely blocked or displaced and the patient can't breathe around the tube. In response to this, you will need to remove the tracheostomy tube and reassess at the mouth and tracheostomy with your look, listen and feel. Also, reapply oxygen to the face and the stoma. From this assessment, you will determine if the patient is breathing or not. If the patient is breathing, then continue with your ABC assessment. If they are not breathing, then you should assess for signs of life and start CPR if necessary. The final section of the algorithm deals with emergency oxygenation. This is when you have removed the tracheostomy tube and there are still no signs of breathing. In this situation, you move to your primary emergency oxygenation strategies by the oronasal route or the tracheostomy stoma. If trying via the oronasal route, apply your standard oral airway maneuvers, head tilt, chin lift, or jaw thrust, make sure to cover the stoma, then try to ventilate using a bag valve mask, airway adjuncts, or a superglottic airway. If trying to ventilate via the stoma, place a paediatric face mask or LMA over the stoma and try to ventilate. You may need to close the nose and mouth to occlude the upper airway and prevent any leak. If your primary emergency oxygenation techniques don't work, then you will have to proceed to your secondary manoeuvres. And these basically involve intubation of one orifice or the other. Oral intubation, expected to be a difficult intubation, make sure to use an uncut tube so you can advance the cuff beyond the stoma site. Alternatively, you have the option of intubating via the stoma itself. You might consider this if it is an established tracheostomy or if you know the upper airway is difficult. You will need either a small tracheostomy tube or a size 6 cuffed endotracheal tube. Don't forget, you might want to consider using equipment to aid your intubation, such as an Aintree catheter, fiber optic scope, or a bougie. Hopefully, if you come across this situation in real life, you won't need to go as far as this. I'm sure by then the situation will be pretty hairy and very, very stressful. So that's the complete algorithm. It gives you a clear, structured, and stepwise approach to managing an emergency involving a patient with a tracheostomy and likely patent upper airway. So to recap, in the event of such an emergency, the first step is to call for help. Next, assess for signs of breathing with your look, listen and feel at the mouth and tracheostomy. Apply high flow oxygen to the face and tracheostomy if the patient is breathing or check for signs of life and start CPR if necessary if the patient isn't breathing. Next, check tracheostomy patency. First, try to pass the suction catheter. If that doesn't work, then deflate the cuff and look, listen and feel again. If that doesn't work, then remove the tracheostomy tube. Assess for breathing again. If there is no breathing, then you'll have to progress through your primary and then your secondary emergency oxygenation maneuvers. But let's hope it doesn't come to that. This algorithm and further information can be found on the National Tracheostomy Safety Project website. So that's all for this talk. Thank you for listening, and I hope you found it useful.